With the unveiling of NVIDIA's latest architecture, the term ray tracing has been floated around quite a bit, but what does it mean? And how is it any different than the current rasterization techniques used today in modern video games? Welcome to a crash course on Turing architecture and ray trace rendering. Just this week, NVIDIA revealed the Turing architecture, dubbing this thing right here the world's first ray tracing GPU. The insane compute performance attributed to the current flagship, the Quadro RTX 8000 apparently, will cost a hefty 10,000 US dollars. It sports 48 gigs of GDDR6, 4608 CUDA cores, and 576 tensor cores. Those are explained in this video right here. But these beefy specs mask an underlying trait that sets the RTX series apart from its predecessors, actually usable real-time ray tracing. Let's start by explaining what we currently use and how ray tracing changes all of it. Today, real-time computer graphics use a technique called rasterization. That's a fancy word for, in a nutshell, 3D modeling in a 2D space. Dozens of triangles, or polygons as the fancy ones call it, attached with position and color information are sandwiched together to create 3D shapes, at which point pixels are generated and shaded to yield a more realistic image. We convey depth and shadows manually with these kinds of techniques, but they can be expensive from a hardware utilization standpoint. You can imagine how millions of polygons stitched together to form various objects in just one scene can require some intense computational power, hence the necessity for GPUs and parallel processing with hundreds or thousands of CUDA cores in the case of NVIDIA. Add to that a frame rate of 60 or even 144 FPS and you've got a crazy demanding render to play out not just on the graphics card side but also the CPUs. In comes ray tracing. This technology has actually been around since the late 60s but we were always limited by our tech technology. Even mighty Tesla V100s, relying on the new Volta stuff, had to run in packs of fours to handle the Unreal Engine Reflections demo you're seeing here, which is currently using active ray tracing. The premise of the technique literally involves its name, tracing light rays from a source to a camera or the human eye no rasterization or shading required. You actually see it all the time in movies with CGI, it's how they blend the real stuff with the fake stuff. But the real kicker with this announcement from Nvidia is seamless real-time ray tracing, which they've been promising for quite a while actually. So this requires a GPU in question to always be on its toes depending on the movement of the user. Obviously as your location relative to the light source changes, and we can have multiple light sources here, so too will the light particles reaching your retina. Real-time ray tracing involves chasing millions and billions of particles around a scene over and over again to depict vivid and accurate depth, shade, and color. If a particle takes too long to, say, reach a red object surface, the GPU will calculate the corresponding shade of red to render, and then compile and average that result with millions of other light particles reaching the same point at the same time from other directions, all the while mapping your ever-changing perspective relative to the object and the light source in question. And that's assuming there's only one light source there. So yeah, it's actually really intense, and it's why we've relied on rasterization and passive shading for so long. But all the news about NVIDIA's RTX brand and the Quadro 8000 is centered on specialized RTX cores dedicated specifically to real-time ray trace calculations. This is thanks to dedicated RT cores paired with tensor cores, again discussed in an earlier video, making them perfect for RT techniques. We, number one, accelerate the ray tracing part of it. We still have to shade it, but the, the ray tracing acceleration is just incredibly fast. The second part is by using AI, we're able to render at a slightly lower resolution, but because we trained that model off of very high quality ground truth, we're essentially going to be able to generate the final image at a much, much higher rate. And so we call it DLAA, the combination of AI and ray tracing has made it possible for us in the Unreal Engine 4 with RTRT, rate, real time ray tracing, running on top of Microsoft's DXR API. This is basically today's most popular platform. We're able to take computer graphics and improve it by a factor of six. Turing is six times Pascal. 
Now, RT core specifics aren't quite known yet. NVIDIA usually saves the technical stuff for later, but we do know that they accelerate ray triangle intersection calculations. That's a fancy way of saying the point at which a light particle hits an object's surface down to the minutest detail. We're talking multiple decimal places. In fact, these core clusters are so efficient that only a single RTX Quadro 8000 was required to run the same reflections demo we just talked about, for which four V100s were previously needed. This board makes real-time ray tracing possible, and we expect at some point in the distant future for these technologies to leech their way into consumer grade cards. We also expect video game developers to catch on when mainstream RT cards actually hit the market, which may be sooner than you think. For now though, we have to wait and see. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Talk about RT cores and other stuff down in the comment section. I'll be there for a while. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you in the next one. This is Cyan Studio. Thanks for learning with us.